What the cluck? Look at this freaking duck. This is a lady, elderly couple that they have a little backyard garden. And they're growing their tomatoes. And lo and behold, you get this really peculiar deformation. Now, just as a caveat, I just added the eye there. But everything else about that picture is real. This was covered by an affiliate uh, of a local news station. And, you know, the elderly couple, they're like surprised. They're shocked. They're like, this thing looks like a freaking duck. I mean, how is that possible? Well, you know, nature has a way of telling you when something is wrong. And this should not be happening. Uh, this is not a natural phenomenon. This is what we call a contamination event. This is actually by Flint, Michigan. And there's been a lot of terrible things that have been happening by Flint, Michigan and Michigan in general. It's really eugenics on steroids when you think about all the problems they've had with the Flint water, uh, with the nuclear industry in Michigan, with the nuclear waste they want to put underneath the Great Lakes in Michigan. And when you consider all the nuclear plants that are on those Great Lakes, and then you have to take in consideration all the plants in Illinois that are similar to the Fukushima design, that those are a bunch of downwinders are the people in Michigan. There's been a lot of terrible events that have happened in Michigan. Detroit River, there was Manhattan Project nuclear waste on site, and they've actually left it there right next to this river, and some of it collapsed right into the river. And lo and behold, the stupid politicians, the uh, designers, engineers, they draw water uh, right near from this area. So there's a lot of factors, what Ratchet calls forced multipliers. You take the Fukushima incident. You take the nuclear reactors, the Candus, that are right on the border of Michigan. You take the Fukushima-like reactors out in Illinois. You multiply those factors, and you're going to get produce like this. Now, they've been saying, oh, well, after a while, we're still going to eat it. No, you never, ever eat a fruit that is mutated. It's a sign. Do not eat it. There's something wrong with its genome. It could actually have radioactive particles inside of that, which likely is what deformed it. So, no, under any condition, I do not recommend to eat one of those fruits that are mutated. Don't stop gardening. I mean, this is what tells us what's going on in our environment or people that have gardens. I wouldn't give up on eating the produce out of her garden, but there were some things I would do before eating foods out of her garden. I've taken additional steps myself that I put filters on the water that I'm giving my produce. I've added activated charcoal to a lot of my soil to actually capture some of these radioactive particles. I would also recommend to add mushrooms and, and funguses. Those things absorb radiation like crazy. So you want to grow those mushrooms when you see them, then you pull them out. And you take a little bit there, what's left, and you add it back, and you keep pulling out mushrooms. You can draw the radioactivity out of the soil. Not perfectly, but you can get it to some extent. We can't stop eating. The perfect ideal situation is to have your own greenhouse where you can control all these factors. Well, the one thing that's really hard to do is to cover all your produce, still get a, a right amount of light. But you can still do that with the right shade cloth. And that way you're not letting rain. And some people swear that rain is the cleanest water. No. Maybe in the early 1900s rain was pretty clean. But now we are in the age of fission. And you got radiation up in these clouds. Even from the beginning of nuclear industry. There's a lot of radiation up there when you consider all the nuclear tests. Rain is not clean anymore. It's not being filtered. It's being bombarded. You want to try to get food out of greenhouses. 
that are under controlled conditions, that you know the water is being filtered, you know the soil is being remedied with activated charcoal, and people are pulling out fungus from these things. Now, another factor is, I don't know everything about the lady's garden, and I'm sure she has all the good intentions in the world, but you don't know what she adds to the garden herself. There's a lot of farmers out there, a lot of people in gardens, they think, oh, fish, this is the big thing now, is they want to do a fish emulsion. So that's like the biggest thing, that's like the uh, sacred grail of the backyard growers now is fish emulsion. Which what is dead fish that has been put into the soil to add nutrients to the soil. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but where is that fish coming from? And a lot of the fish kill is coming out of the Pacific Ocean, and then people are adding that to their gardens. And you're going to get things like this. Now, I don't know about you. I have a garden. I grow the food so I can eat it. I don't grow the food just for show, for looks. If you're just growing something for looks... Flowers and things, well, I guess that's fine. I still wouldn't want to add any fish emulsion to my garden, even if I was just growing flowers. You don't know. I mean, those flowers, they fall to the ground. They become little dust particles eventually, and you could breathe them. It's all about remediation now. We can only do so much. We are in the nuclear age. And you got to really think about where you're getting your produce from. You want to look on your labels. You want to find out product of origin and I know it's really difficult now because the way that they made labeling laws where they could disguise origins now so you got to really look out for codes find out what those codes are and then you can track which countries they come from now a lot of the problem is that they'll just say a country well that's sometimes you need to know a city I would love to even know a zip code I think every product sold every produce sold in the United States should have a zip code of where that food comes from. That way you could go to Google Maps or whatever, you could type it in, and you could see how far it is away from a nuclear plant. You look at the majority of the nuclear plants in the United States, you could go within five miles of a nuclear plant and you're going to find farms. Sickening as it is, I mean, you could find sheep that you could see in the distance. You could see the big cooling towers from a nuclear reactor. It's just sick. It's madness. I have to say the future looks bleak. There could become a time you're talking about grid down. All these preppers are like, well, you got to worry about the grid down. Not a lot of people are talking about it, but if the grid goes down, most of the nuclear reactors will melt down. Probably about 99% of the nuclear reactors will melt down because nuclear reactors need power to run. And not a lot of people know that. People think, well, the, the nuclear plants, they, they make their own energy. But they actually have to have energy coming into the plant to help run the turbines. Why they have all these nuclear plants really is not just about energy. It is about isotopes that they can peddle to the public, to the medical industry, to contaminate your children. You got forced chemo being put on kids through corrupt judges. So even if you could find a CBD treatment, there was even a case where this kid, he had cancer. They had just like given up on this kid. He was months from death. And the family, they didn't want to put their kid on chemo. So what they did, they did a CBD treatment. The kid was totally healed. Cancer, gone. Right? So what happened? The judge was so furious. They took the kid away from the parents, CPS. And they put the kid on chemo treatment. After he was already healed from cancer. That's how sick our country is. And our freedoms. You think you're we're in a free country? No. This country is far from free. I'm sorry. But it's been sold out a long time ago. Just look around. Nature's telling you. There's signs. Follow the signs. Don't become a statistic for the nuclear industry. Because you won't even be a statistic to the nuclear industry. They'll blame it on something else. I got a little video of the clip of the elderly couple talking about the produce they found. And like I said, if you got a garden, don't stop gardening because we all got to eat anyway. Just take some extra steps. Be careful where you're getting your soil from. Find out how far it is from a nuclear plant. 
remedy your soil, activated charcoal, use fungal, fungals to draw out that because mushrooms absorb radiation like nothing else really. Even hemp can do that to some degree. Get a Geiger counter. Start putting it on these bags of soil and if you pick up something hotter than, than another bag, go with the lower number. I've done that with coffee. I found some coffee about double the other coffee. People are like, well, coffee is grown in a hot climate. How, how is it going to be radioactive? I mean, because it's, it's usually grown near the equator. Well, like I said, people are using fish and moss and people are using seaweed around their plants now. It's very popular. If you look at all the big guys on YouTube, they are talking about using seaweed and fish on there around their trees and then what do you get you're going to be increasing the radioactivity in your produce anyways i'm going to get to that clip of the other couple so stick around for a few minutes and please leave your comments suggestions observations and stories down below i thought gee that's kind of strange and then i'm thinking and i put him down and i thought oh well to me, he looks like a duck. It looks like a duck, but doesn't quack like one. That's because it's a tomato grown right here in Genesee County. Marie Davidak picked it right out of her garden when she told her husband, Bob, he had to see it to believe it. I said, uh, no, no, I, uh, you didn't find a duck. And she showed me that. And I said, he, he's either a chicken or a duck. Well, he's, he's a no, I. He's it's hard duck. to believe that he grew that way. <laughs> the David X have been gardening here in Mount Morris Township for decades, but they say this is the first time they've ever seen a fruit or vegetable that looks so unique. A lot of times you'll find a tomato that's kind of joined, but never one with the beak. The couple says they have no plans to cut up and eat this duck-shaped tomato anytime soon. I hate to see him kind of go, and I was trying, yeah. to, trying to find out how I could make him survive, but um, I don't think there's anything that I could do. So while it still has some life, Marie hopes her tomato brings a smile to some faces as she shares her love of gardening. This is really something that I think a lot of people should see. Maybe somebody else will start growing a garden.